What I really like about that story that you told is that if we get out of our kids' way, if we take this role of consultant, coach, that it actually is not only easier for us, it's easier for our kids. And it is so much more efficient from the standpoint of like time and energy (laughs) for us just to like follow their lead a little bit more. So, so for, for parents in the audience that are like, okay, this being a consultant thing, it sounds terrifying. What would be some (laughs) first steps? So I mean, the, the, the main thing for to know is, is that the, the thesis of the, the, the self-driven child is that besides letting kids know that they're deeply loved, probably the best thing we can do for them is to nurture that sense of control and autonomy in their own life because it's so crucial for mental health and for motivation. I mean, think about it. Really anxious kids, their thinking is completely out of control. They feel, their, their life feels out of control. If they're depressed, forget it. And, and, and I, was talk, I was talking a few years ago with, with, with the guy who does, who's the head of all the anxiety and depression, pa, pediatric anxiety and depression research at NIH. And, and he said, the, the key for, to, for the solving our mental health problems is preventing mental health problems in children and teenagers. And I, so I think by focusing on happiness and focusing on sense of control, really powerful. And the three implications of this, we've been talking recently about the three implications of this idea of thinking about yourself more as a consultant to your kids than as their boss or their manager um, is number one, is to offer help and offer advice. We have so much to contribute, so so much to give our kids, but if we try to force it down their throats, it never works. And so offer help, offer advice, don't try to force it. As much as possible, encourage kids to make their own decisions. That, we, that decision-making requires practice. And ultimately, for kids to be independent, we want them to be good decision-makers. And thirdly, is, is that we want kids as much as they can to solve problems. We can brainstorm, we can help them, but, but when they need that experience of solving their own problems in order to develop the confidence they can handle hard stuff. And, and our goal for kids is, is that they, they are able to run their own life before they leave home. And, and because that's what you, you go to cop, we, we see so many kids and there's it's so many stories of, of, of kids who get into the most elite colleges and they're home by November, or they take a medical leave and they go to the manager clinic in Houston for treatment that they, they, they just can't, they, they just don't have enough experience just running their own life with their parents, not managing their life, but helping the kids figure out who do you want to be? What kind of life do you want? How, do you, how, how can I help you get there? Uh, if I can I say really quickly, we talk, it's, it's worth picking up book, the book just to, to, to explore. We talk about the neurological underpinnings of happiness versus pleasure. And the, these are different things. And so often we think that, gosh, if I just get, if I just get, um, you know, this thing's going to, that gives me pleasure is actually what's going to make me happy. And so there's a wonderful researcher, a guy named Robert Lustig, who talks about four C's and three of them are connecting. We've just talked about contributing the meaning we've talked about and coping just as Bill described that this, this sense of, I can, I can make choices. I can make decisions. And when things don't go well, I can figure it out and fix it well enough, even if it's suboptimal, that it's a good enough outcome because that, that ability to cope is just, is, is, is vital to get through life because goodness, if, if, if the four of us could sit here and say to everyone who's watching this, that nothing profoundly bad, whatever happened to your kids, that would be, this would be the best use of anyone's hour you could ever imagine. But we can't promise that. And, I, and I'm not going to dwell on this, but, but really quickly, about six weeks ago, my 19-year-old son, our 19-year-old son was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Fortunately, he's a well-mannered child. So he chose the one type of brain tumor that's most amenable to treatment. So we feel like we've got a good through line on this, right? And we didn't go, we, we talked about in the book about the language of, an, of a non-anxious presence. We handled this pretty well. He's got a pretty upbeat personality and he has a sense that I'm going to be able to cope with this as well. And, you know, and he sort of went, bounced right back to, well, let me write a song about this, <laughs> you know, because when he has the sense that with help, fortunately, medical people, not, not me, right. With a, with a sense that I, that, that I can cope with this. It's not going to be easy. I'm going to be nauseated. Yeah. I may lose my hair. Yeah. But you know what? I can live with those things. And he's back to being the happy kid that he is. I hope at some point you get to meet him. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a gem.